Is it working? Hello? Looks like it works. <clears throat> I apologize if I clear my throat a bit tonight. I am uh, recovering from not the flu, but some sort of virus that kind of knocked me out for three days. Unfortunately, I gave it to my daughter and she had it for a couple of days. Fever and sinus and cough and just overall feeling horrible. I think I got it from the weekend of the Crowder Cup. You know, we had people over at the warehouse and it's the first time that I hung out unmasked. And while I didn't get any COVID scares, definitely was not, uh, uh, was not used to having that many people nearby, <laughs> especially people who were visiting from out of town. So I think that was it. If you like the gravelly voice, you're in for a treat. I do have my water here with me and my Kleenex just in case I need to sneeze or anything happens, <laughs> I'll have a little bit of protection. Uh, but the show must go on. It's been three weeks. It is time to chat. Last week was a little busy. Uh, actually, last week was when I was sick, so last week wasn't going to happen. And the week before was before the Crowder Cup, so it was super busy. Um, so it's time. We had to do gear talk. It's been too long. Feels like ages since I've been able to chat with you. So I'm excited to spend an hour or so chatting with my friends about blading stuff. Um, all right. Hey everyone, welcome to episode 95 of Gear Talk. Gear Talk is the, can't talk even. Gear Talk is the show that I do every other week or so, depending if I'm sick. Uh, where we talk about the geekier side of rollerblading. If you've got a cabinet full of classic skates that you've been buying up on eBay because they remind you of the past, but you know you shouldn't skate them because they're just going to explode, you come to the right place. Gear Talk is the show where we talk about different plastics and how well they age, different adhesives, and how to fix things after they fall apart after 20 years of sitting around in the garage with spiders and crap like that. I actually saw somebody post today on the Facebook who said that they hadn't skated for six months and they left their skates in the garage and there were spider webs on them. And they didn't know the safest way to clean their skates of the spider webs without getting them damaged or asking if there was a better way to clean them or not. I don't really worry about spider webs. I don't really have a spider problem. Uh, but skates are meant to get dirty. That's why you never buy white skates. Don't buy white skates. They're just going to get dirty. So get black. Always get black. Um, skates are meant to be dirty. Uh, they're not meant to break. And they should last for a few years at least. Five, ten years, I would think. Twenty years is definitely pushing it. But as you'll see later tonight, we'll talk a little bit about that. Before we get started, I always like to thank my friends over at thehelmetinitiative.org for helping us with our helmet giveaway. We are very fortunate to be able to give away a helmet for every episode of Gear Talk, and this is because of our friends over at thehelmetinitiative.org. Helmets are super important. When you go skate, it's important to wear pads. You gotta protect yourself, and the helmet is probably the best piece of equipment that you can wear to make the most impact if you do fall and uh, get hurt. Having a serious brain injury is life-changing, and we don't want anybody to stop blading because of an injury. You can get bored, you can go find something else, that's all fine, but I don't want anybody to fall and hit their head and have to stop because of it. Wearing a helmet is super important, and I know that helmets are a little expensive, especially right now, you know, there's a lot of jobs out there, but uh, this inflation thing is uh, creeping people out, and I know people are spending a little bit less than they normally would. 50 bucks for a good helmet is a lot of money. I'm here to help you out. So thanks to our friends at thehelmetinitiative.org, we have a few helmets that we're able to give away. If you are in need of a helmet, and if you're actually going to wear a helmet, I don't like sending helmets to people. They're just gonna sit around and collect spider webs and all that. If you're actually going to wear a helmet, I would love to send you a helmet. Back to bladingcom slash helmet. I will paste a link in the show note, in the chat. Back to bladingcom slash helmet is the best place to go to get your helmet. We'll be giving away one helmet 
for every episode of Gear Talk. All that we ask is that you put in your name and information if you need a helmet. If you don't need a helmet and if you just want to win something, don't do this. We want to do something nice for the community and give helmets to people who actually want them, who are actually going to wear them. If that is you and you need a helmet, backtoblading.com slash helmet is a good place to put in your information. We'll pick somebody at random and uh, we'll send you out a helmet. Now, if you are in the US, we have triple eight certified sweat savers that we are sending out. We've got all the sizes. We've got a variety of colors. We'll check in with you and see which one you like, what your size is, and to get your address to mail it out. If you are outside of the US, we don't send you a helmet. The reason is that shipping costs a lot of money outside of the US and importing it into your country is gonna cost almost as much as the helmet itself. So rather than do that, we like to send you money. So we'll just send some money to your Venmo or to your PayPal. This money comes from the ads that we show on our YouTube channel, as well as our supporters on Patreon. Patreon.com slash back to blading is where you can get all the information about our Patreon. We do some exclusive content, not a ton lately, to be honest, it's been a little busy. So it's one of those things that I try to do as much in public as I can, but if there is exclusive stuff like new skates that we're testing or projects that we're working on, we like to post those to the Patreon before anybody else knows about them. We also do a podcast every other week, every three weeks, where um, we post the podcast to the Patreon first so that you have first dibs to listen to it. As many things as we can do to help people out and say, you know, thank you for supporting us. But really the Patreon is a place for people who have a little bit of disposable income who want to support what we're doing here at Back to Blading and want to help us with our helmet initiative program. I don't expect anybody out there who is a student or who is hard on their luck to support us on the Patreon. There are plenty of different ways you can support this channel. You can watch the videos, you can share the videos, you can like the videos. Don't give us money. Money is tangible. Money is something that you might need to use. If you have a little bit of extra money, help us out patreon.com slash back to blading the money will go to good use it will find helmets to people it will help with shipping to helmets for helmets that we have in stock and it goes back to helping us continue to keep the lights on here at back to blading uh, we do have a lot of lights and the internet and things like that uh, all right so back to blading.com slash uh, slash helmet if you would like to win a helmet thanks to our friends at the helmet initiative.org if you would like uh, more information about their program and patreon.com slash back to bleeding to support. All right, um, before we get started, let me talk a little bit about my current setup. Now, I haven't skated very much lately. I have skated in the warehouse a little bit on the mini ramp. When we had our open house uh, two weeks ago, I was able to skate and I skated a little bit with everybody that came and visited. And if it was you that came out and visited, thank you so much for spending the time to come over and visit. Uh, we've been working really hard on getting the warehouse up and running so that people could come over and visit. We've got the showroom all assembled, so you, now you can see all of the products that I've put together and that I've supported. We've got a mini ramp in the back so that we can have a nice little place to session even if it gets hot or if it gets rainy outside. And then we had the front parking lot all covered with P-rails and uh, boxes and quarter pipes and things like that so that we could skate in the front. It was a lot of fun and I absolutely enjoyed it. I was here at 9 a.m. and I didn't leave until 9 p.m. and I was here the whole day meeting everybody, saying hi, skating probably three or four times. So it was a lot of skating for me. Uh, but you know what? When everybody was here, I just wanted to get in on the action and have fun because everybody else was having fun. Um, we are a little announcement. We are doing another open house. So if you missed the first open house and you would like to come and make the trip to visit, we will be having an open house uh, next Sunday, May 15th. We're going to be premiering the 5050 video research triangle. It is a uh, new video that uh, we've been filming over the last couple of weeks. And uh, it's got all of the team, the pro team on it. Um, it's gonna be a really fun video. I've seen it, it's really great. I absolutely love the video. Um, if you would like to come out and watch it with us, we're gonna be opening up the warehouse and we'll be using the projector and projecting the video on the big screen on the wall with the stereo Sonos system so that you got nice sound system. We're gonna be sitting back on the mini ramp, watching the video, and then after the video, 
uh, hanging out and skating. And we'll probably have some food so that people can eat and hang out and stuff like that. We'll be opening the doors at 11 a.m. on Sunday, May 15th. Uh, video starts at 12 p.m. That's on the Balance Distribution channel. Uh, so if you are watching this from somewhere that you cannot join, we will be doing a live premiere so everybody can watch the video at the same time. We'll have some of the team in the chat so you can talk with them and they'll talk with you. It's not a long video. It's 10, 15 minutes, so it's not going to take forever. It's not one of those big, you know, VODs that you would pay money for. It's a free VOD uh, that we just want to put out there. Um, and uh, share our experience here in the, uh, the, the area when we were skating over the, uh, over the weekend. Um, 11 o'clock, oh, doors open here in uh, Durham. If you need information, go to the Fitty Fitty Frames uh, Instagram. There's more information up there. Uh, more information also to come in the next week or so. But uh, bring your skates. So we will be skating the boxes in front. We will have the mini ramp open so you can skate and we'll have all the products so you can take a look at everything from 5050 compass chroma or mushroom blading. Everything will be on display. So you can take a look. If you want to pick something up, you can buy anything you want if we've got it in stock. Uh, otherwise, you can look at it and then go back home and buy it from your favorite shop. All right, um, let's talk about my current setup. So like I said, I did skate a little bit. I am still on the Adapt Stealth. These are just my go-to skates now. Um, I've gotten to a point where I am comfortable enough with my Royales that I can do Royales with this skate without having to get used to it. Um, before, I struggled with Royales with this skate. And the reason is this skate has a really stiff cuff. If you look at this cuff up here, this black area isn't plastic. This is all material. And underneath is carbon fiber. So you can see the carbon wrap around here. This is all carbon back here. The carbon goes all the way up to the top of the cuff. So you can actually feel it all the way up there. That makes this a very stiff skate. Now I like a stiff skate. I come from a hockey background. So I'm used to tying my skates really tight, almost to a point where they fall asleep. I love having a stiff skate. I love having super responsive boots. But when you're doing Royales, especially when you're just learning them, a little bit more of a loose skate is probably a better option. You've got to get really low and confident on your Royale foot to get boot down on a stiff cuff like this Adapt. There are a lot of other stiff cuffs out there. These ones, for all the months that I tried skating them after different skates, had always been a problem for me. I always struggled trying to get boot down on these boots. But since I started doing more Royales and started getting better at them, I've had absolutely no problems. I've been skating them uh, consistently. These have been my go-to skate. You know, I kind of retired my USD Carbons and I switched over to the Adapts and absolutely love them. Um, I did order the new Brutale, so I don't know when they're going to come in. They're supposed to be in production this week, maybe last week, and I don't know how long they take to make, but they are in production as soon as they get here. I will post some pictures to the Patreon so that you can see the new skates. These are the Brutale 2022s with the removable cuff area, which should make them last a little bit longer. One of the biggest concerns with buying any sort of carbon or a integrated liner skate is when you wear out the cuff area, which is the part of the liner that usually wears out first, you kind of have to throw out the skate. You can't fix this area very easily. The new Brutales, the 2022s, have a removable area back here. So this whole padded area, you'll actually be able to pull out and then put a new one back in if you want. I'm excited for them. They should be here, I don't know. I don't know when they'll be here. I don't know how long they take to make. I don't know how long they take the ship. I'm assuming that they'll be here in June. I ordered them in April. So that makes sense to me, six weeks, four to six weeks. But we'll see. Um, when they show up, they show up and I'll let everybody know. I am also on Prime Frames. Love the Prime Frames. I think this groove is great for skating coping. I love the responsiveness that I get. Even on an anti rocker setup, it feels nice and fast. Full disclosure, obviously, I designed these frames, so take it with a grain of salt. But I built them around the way that I like to skate. 
They are a aluminum and plastic hybrid. So if you haven't seen the prime frames, you can see the gold in the inside. That is an aluminum core. And then this plastic is a wall that you mount on using the first and the last axles. Those axles keep this wall mounted to the core and the core mounts to the boot using UFS. So it's 167 millimeters from one bolt to the other. You fasten them onto your boot and you leave that core on and you can replace these walls as often as you want with whatever color walls you want, whatever style walls you want. All you have to do is replace the first and the last uh, axles, pop off the wall, put on a new wall, and you're good to go. Which reminds me, a little bit of housekeeping. I won't take too long. Don't want this to turn into an ad, but um, I did want to share some of the new products that we're working on. Uh, this is a 50-50 thing. You've seen all of the Yandy uh, chroma wheels. You've seen the mushroom blading stuff. You've seen the white compass frames. Um, this is some new stuff from 5050. We have a new prime wall. This one we actually had for a while. We had since January. They've been sitting in the warehouse, but I haven't announced them yet because I wanted to make sure that John got his time in the sun so everybody knew that John's signature frame was available. Now we have a new signature frame that we announced a bit ago. These are the Sasha Lopez frame walls and prime frame. So this is a very special setup. So Sasha is a skater from Argentina. He lives in Barcelona now. He and I met right when I brought back 5050 and he hit me up and said, hey, you know what? I used to skate on the 5050 international team. I would love to do whatever I can to help you bring 5050 back to where it was. And I love the frames. If there's anything that I can do to support, let me know. I was like, that's absolutely awesome. Let me send you some product and let's see, you know, how we go. Like, let's see what we can do with the brand. I don't know if there's still a market out there for 5050, but clearly, you know, four years later, um, we've proven that yes, people love the brand and they love the new products. These are the Sasha Lopez prime frames. So like I was showing with the John Fromm frames on my skates, these are the same design just different colorways. So this is a prime frame. This is a anti-rocker optimized design. It's got a really deep groove, which is perfect for riding anti-rocker. It does fit 60 millimeter wheels flat. If you wanted to ride flat, you could go 60, 60, 60, 60. But Sasha skates anti-rocker. So we are selling this as an anti-rocker frame. These are the brand new 60 millimeter 90A 5050 wheels in white. Now we haven't made white wheels before. And the reason is that I don't know how well white urethane is gonna hold up, to be completely honest. Our natural urethane is like a dark gray. So adding pigment to urethane changes the compound of the urethane. Our wheels are amazing. And one of the main reasons why we have a black wheel where most people have a white wheel is because you don't have to add very much pigment to it. So it keeps the compound of the wheel as close to natural urethane as possible. Now the test is will making a wheel in white make any difference to the durability and performance of the wheels? The factory says they will not. The factory has been making white wheels forever and they have no problem selling white wheels. They have no problem with their customers saying that white wheels don't hold up as well, but I don't believe it until I skate them. So I've got a set of these that I'm going to be skating. I set a set out to Becky Satello out in California. She's going to be skating them. She's not super hard on wheels, but she's really good at telling me when wheels are good or when they're not. I've sent her a bunch of samples in the past and she's always given me really great feedback. So she's got this set up on the way. She should have it by the weekend. We're also bringing back the white anti-rocker wheels. These are the UHMW anti-rocker wheels. Look really great with the white wheels, all white. It's just a clean look. We haven't made white UHMW for a while. The black obviously matches the black wheels. If we're going to bring back white wheels, I'm sorry, if we're going to release white wheels, we will definitely bring back the white UHMW anti-rockers to match because this is such a clean look. Wheels matching with the anti-rocker wheels. 
Doesn't matter what color the frame wall is. It's just an incredible look. If this experiment goes well, if these 6090s hold up the way that I hope they will hold up, which is as good as our black 6090s, we will start introducing all of our wheels in white. So that includes the popular 5090s, the 5088s, the 6088s, the 6590s, all of the wheels that you already get from 5050, you can try in white. Now that's to say that these will hold up. I'm not gonna bring out a product that doesn't hold up. We're only bringing in 125, no, 250 sets of these wheels. So there's not a ton of wheels coming in. If you wanna get a set of these, they're gonna be here at the end of the month. They're on the water right now, they're on the boat. They will be here. We'll probably sell them to shops as well, but we'll definitely have them available on our website if you wanna pick them up. I think they'll hold up just fine. I don't think there's going to be a problem, but it's nice to test before we do a full commitment with all the different sizes and hardnesses. 6090 is a really great durometer. It holds up really well. The, 90, uh, the 90A uh, urethane is really great. And 60 millimeter is just a really great size for all sorts of skating, but primarily it's really great for anti-rocker. And anti-rocker is the test. Anti-rocker is where you make the most damage to wheels. If anything is gonna go wrong with a wheel, it's gonna go wrong with a 60 millimeter wheel skating and a rocker. So let's see how they hold up. Um, this whole frame setup. So you can buy this frame now. We've got walls available. The cores are pretty limited. I think we're down to like 10 of each size. What does that mean? Well, you can get a core system frame like the ones that I have on my adapts. So this is the same design is a prime frame. You can look at Sasha's. So this is a prime frame for Sasha. This is a prime frame for John. It's the same design, just different colors. You can see the axles are backwards actually. Same design, just different colors. Now the core system allows you to switch the walls whenever you want. This is what a wall looks like without the core. So it is just the plastic part of the frame without the core. So you don't have to buy the full prime frame. If you've already got a core system, all you need to do is buy a replacement wall. Say you bought yourself some white prime frames when they first came out. All you would need to do is buy this wall. These walls are 50 bucks. So that's cheaper than balance frames, cheaper than any of our frames. It is a replaceable grind plate basically that attaches to the side of the core. You can get the silver axles, axles are 12 bucks. So by 62 bucks or so, you could get yourself a full Sasha Lopez setup. Just get yourself the replacement walls, use the existing silver cores, get yourself some silver axles and you're up and running. We have plenty of these in stock. What we don't have are the cores. So we'll have more cores in the end of May a lot more are coming in in July, but end of May, we're bringing some in by an air shipment so that we have plenty in stock for people who want to pick up Sasha's frame. But if you already have prime frames, you've already got the cores. Just take this core, take this uh, old wall off, put the new Sasha wall back on the core and you're good to go. That is the future of the core system. So not only are we introducing different colors, but we'll be introducing different designs. So this is a great frame for any rocker, but there are different disciplines out there. There's big wheels, there's flat setups, there's freestyle setups. We would love nothing more than to have a wall for every sort of setup that you'd like. And all you need to do if you've already got the core system is just get these walls, replace them, and you're good to go. These are available now. Um, the Sasha frames, the full kit, we have a few of these ready to roll anti rocker setups. These are going to be available in the end of the month. As soon as these wheels get in the full line, the full run is probably going to be available in July, uh, but we'll have most of them available by the end of the month. So if you're interested in picking them up, you can pre-order them now, or I'll let you know when they come in. These white wheels, I think you're going to go pretty fast. I don't have these available for pre-order yet. We're only selling these with the Sasha frame bundle. But as soon as these come in, I'll also let you know so that we can get 
all the white wheels out to people. And uh, yeah, can't wait to see what you think about them. I'm really excited. I think the white looks amazing. Um, I really want to bring out white for everything. I think there are a lot of people out there who've been reserved to try Fitty Fitty wheels because they don't like black urethane. Totally get that. You need to find the right color wheel that works for you. And if you look down and you see a black wheel versus a white wheel, you know, it's important. You got to have wheels that look good. You can't always do color. Black and white is nice and clean. As soon as we can bring these out in white, I think more people will try these wheels and realize how good the Fitty Fitty wheels are. And huge congratulations to Sasha. Amazing skater. I uh, hope that his edit is ready soon. He's got a few clips that he wanted to get and he keeps getting sick. I don't think he's gotten COVID, but he's gotten sick sick and he's been out for the last couple of weeks. Uh, either he is out or his filmer is out. It's been a really rough time um, for him and his family. Um, so again, and it should drop with the announcement, but for whatever reason, it doesn't always happen that way. Uh, but he will have an edit out soon, probably this week, maybe next week. Uh, just depends on how healthy he can get. Uh, but huge congratulations. I'm stoked to have him on the team. And uh, yeah, I, I hope that we can bring him out to uh, the United States sometime, um, maybe on our next tour, tour video. Um, and, uh, you know, he can experiment, uh, experience what it's like skating out here. I don't think he's ever been over to the States, so that would be a nice treat. All right, um, before we get started on the main event, let's talk a little bit about uh, your questions. So um, I always love taking questions during a live stream. If you have a question for me, please make sure that you tag Back to Bleeding on the live chat. If you're watching this in the future and we're not live, um, I'm sorry that I can't do this all the time. Uh, we do it at 9 p.m. Eastern on Wednesday night. Usually every other Wednesday, sometimes every third Wednesday. Um, I know that that's a difficult time for some people, especially our friends out in Europe or in Asia or Australia. It's a difficult time. If you have a question and you're watching this, leave a comment in the video. I'm really good at reading my comments. And if you have a question, I will definitely answer it. Anything goes, mostly skating related, preferred. If you have a question about some old skates that you've got, or if you're getting back into it and you have a question that you haven't been able to find the answer for, through all your Googling and your YouTube searching, let me know. Um, I'm not saying that I have all the answers, but I'm pretty good about hunting things down and researching. So if you've got a question, I would love nothing more than to take a stab at it and at least send you in the right direction to get some help. Because I don't want anybody sitting there saying, oh, I don't know what to do about skates. I'm not gonna skate until I know. Let me help you. Let's get you skating. Um, and you know, most importantly, Let's make sure that your skates are optimized for the way that you skate. That is the most important thing. If we can improve the fit of your skate, if we can make every skating session as great as possible so that your equipment is dialed in so that you have a really good time skating, you're going to skate more and that's going to make me happy. We want more skaters out there. So the more that we can do to help people have good experiences when they're skating, the better. Anyway, if you have a question now, uh, tag back to Blading. I'm going to scroll to the top of the chat and see if there are any questions that I can answer. Always love answering questions. Sometimes it's a minefield, but <laughs> this week might be good. Who knows? All right. Um, Wiki. Uh, no question here. Just wanted to tell you I had my first session with the Prime Frames. Best frame I've ever committed. A sin by adapting the balance. Uh, juice blocks. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> um, thank you, Wiki, for your support. Um, I love the prime frames. I do love the balance frames. No, uh, you know, no hate on that. Uh, balance frames are lower profile. They're a tighter groove. They're probably better for a flat setup. But for me, I'm an anti rocker skater. I love the prime frames because as a big, you know, I'm not tall. I'm 5'11", I guess. Getting a good stride on an anti-rocker frame, you need a really stiff frame because you've only got those two wheels of contact. So I like having that stiffness of the aluminum core. A balance frame, amazing for skating flat with like 58s or 56s. And you can do all of your swizzly things and still skate. It's got a really nice groove and a really narrow, uh, narrow uh, groove, really nice split, really narrow groove. So you don't get too much wheel bite when you're doing all your grinds. Um, but definitely, if you want to ride juice blocks, 
absolutely no problem with that. Um, they don't necessarily fit super well. We don't, you know, recommend that you ride juice blocks on prime frames, uh, but if you can get them to fit, great. A little tip, when we were experimenting with the juice blocks way back in the days when we first designed them in like the early 2000s, we had some issues trying to get the measurements right. And if the juice blocks were a little short, they would start spinning a little bit. The way that they keep from spinning, the way they keep from spinning is the juice block goes in here and we, we bolt it in with the axle and then it wedges up against the wall. So the wall of the H block is super important. You have to wedge that juice block right up there. If it doesn't, your juice block might spin. If the measurement is a little bit off, with it, which it might be in a prime frame, what I would recommend doing is taking some paper and folding it in half, just a little slip of paper, fold it in half and wedge it in between the juice block and the H block. Tighten it up and see if it works. If it doesn't work, if it still spins, fold the paper in again. Put the H block or the juice block back in, tighten it up and keep doing that over and over and over again. You might have to add a second piece of paper if you can't fold it so much. But as you get more paper in there, it's going to create this little, little bit of surface and make the H block a little bit wider, which will make the juice block spin less. And then as soon as you find that magic, that magic distance, you slide the juice block in this way, put the axle in and wedge it in really nicely and then you shouldn't have any spinning issues. Little tip from me to you on using juice blocks where you shouldn't be using, but it might help you have a better session. So I'm all for it. And thank you again for the support and thanks for watching. Uh, Jace Bros, hey Jace Bros, just stopping by to say hello. Can't hang tonight, working late, bummed I'm gonna miss it. No problem, work is important. I hope that you are safe. I hope you're having a quick session or whatever you're doing over at uh, wherever you work, a quick shift and that it's, uh, it's nice and fast so that it doesn't drag on. I used to work security and that was a late night. We used to work overnight. I would start at 11 and I would be done at 7 and that was long, especially around 3 or 4 a.m. That night starts dragging. So I hope that tonight is fast for you. I hope that you have a quick shift and uh, Thanks for watching uh, whenever you get to watch. Mike McFly. Mike, how are you, sir? Um, those vintage rollerblade Patrons I sent you, despite them being 18 years old, I jumped off a few roofs with them. Rollerblade plastic holds up well. A lot of rollerblade products that broke. Now, obviously, there are some old rollerblade products that did break. But from the Dirk era on, the aggressive specific skates, you don't find too many broken rollerblade products. It's really interesting. Um, all other brands are pretty well represented in the broken skate section, but yeah, I don't know if it's because people weren't skating rollerblades and held up a lot better. Um, rollerblade and Solomon are kind of the two that held up the best. Maybe Rossi's. I think Rossi's rollerblade and Solomon are pretty good. Um, but yeah, I haven't skated the Patrons. Um, I probably should. I did get to show them to Chris Edwards. So Chris came by um, during the uh, Crowder Cup weekend and um, I showed him the wall and I talked to him about, you know, my favorite skates and he showed me the Patrons and said, you know, I remember designing these and we had the Daytonas and I was talking about how the Patrons are this crazy innovative system with the spinning rocker system and the aluminum H block. It was pretty incredible. And they didn't remember how heavy they were. They were heavy skates, um, but he was stoked to see them. So just know Mike that Chris Edwards held your skates uh, and was very happy to see them on the wall. So definitely a really cool, uh, really cool time. And if you didn't see, um, we have the mural out in the warehouse. Um, I got him a Sharpie so that he could climb up and sign uh, the little homage that we had to Chris uh, on the wall as the godfather of our sport. He's the guy that started it all. So it was really great to have him here. And I'd never really hung out with Chris. You know, I chatted with him a bit back in the days, but it was really nice to sit and talk and skate with him a little bit. He's a really, really great dude. Anyway, you would have loved it. I hope you can come up here uh, for one of the open houses whenever the next one is not the one in May. I'm sure that's a little late notice, but we'll have we'll have more. It's probably a little cooler here than it is in Florida. Maybe it's pretty hot here. 
Um, SP Skate. There is a very old pair of skates in my garage. The wheels are broken and sticky. It's just nasty, bro. Yeah, um, I mean, they shouldn't be hanging out in your garage, but that's a... Uh, it happens. I mean, that's what happens when skates sit around. Um, you don't need to keep them protected in a climate controlled office like I do, but definitely would recommend putting them in a box if you want to keep them um, in some sort of shape. Uh, a plastic bin would be good. Just keep them in there so that they don't get exposed to the elements. Anything dark would be good. You don't want to have the UV light breaking down the plastic. Uh, and keeping them out of the garage is smart. It gets pretty hot in there. I had mine in the uh, the attic, and it gets really hot in the attic as well. Any closet that you have that doesn't get to extreme heats, probably a good place to put anything made of plastic if you plan on keeping them for any considerable amount of time. I think 20 years for skates is a pretty good time. I don't think you plan on skating them after that. But if you're not going to skate them, you should put them someplace that you can appreciate them or give them to somebody who can. Uh, but it's great that you have some skates out in the garage. It's, I'm sorry that they're, they're nasty, but I mean, that's, that's what happens to things in the garage. Thanks for watching. Um, True 27 Skates, thanks for having the faction crew at the warehouse last weekend. We had a blast and the hospitality was very much appreciated. Well, thank you so much for coming by. Had a Great time. I was talking a little bit about that earlier. Um, what an amazing event. Uh, you know, the Crowder event at Marsh was great. I wish I could stick around a little bit longer. I did get a little sunburn. I don't know about everybody else, but a little bit sunburned from then. Um, but it looked like everybody was having a great time. There were so many rollerbladers. It was really heartwarming to see my local spot uh, just flooded with skaters. You know, we don't get that many skaters out here. So seeing that many people out here was really awesome. And then, yeah, definitely having you all over here uh, to see what I've been working on meant a lot. Um, I put a lot of effort and energy into the community and it's always kind of a solo project. You know, I do the gear talk thing, but I'm by myself in the office here. So it's not like I have a bunch of skaters that I hang out with. Most of the people that I hang out with are online. When I do skate, it's pretty much by myself. There are great skaters in the area, but you know, schedules suck. We all work. Um, and some of us have kids and have prior commitments. So trying to get out to sessions is really difficult. And I always hate being that guy that they always ask, oh, can you go skate? Can you go skate? And I always have to say no. Or I say, yeah, I'm going to try, but I know that I'm not going to be able to make it out because I've got, you know, drive my daughter to dance class or pick up my kid from school or something like that. So it was great to have everybody over. Great to skate with you. And, uh, Hope you can come back again. Um, it doesn't have to be next summer. You can come back in fall when it's a little cool up in, uh, up in I'm assuming you're in Maryland, but if you're in Maryland, great. Um, when it's getting cool up there or snowy up there, it might be snowy here, but we'll have a nice mini ramp indoors. Compound doesn't have any indoor mini ramps that I know of. Just saying, Clark, got to get working on that. Uh, but always welcome. Uh, our house is your house. Thanks for coming out. All right, let's see. Any more questions? I think oh, we got a couple. Uh, let's see. Uh, Alex Paz, may the force be with you. Actually, I think you mean may the force be with you. It's a Star Wars reference. Thanks for, uh, thanks for remembering Star Wars. Um, <laughs> um, Zach Markham. Hey, Zach, have you ever heard of the Core TC500 Tricol Skates? I have my eye on a pair on eBay and I can't find any reviews or information of them anywhere. Any insights? Um, yeah, so the Core Skate, C-O-R-R, -R, they are a OEM brand of a China knockoff. Um, so they are based on the old Solomon designs, but it is a, um, it's not really a brand that you uh, equate with quality. Uh, Core is, especially in Europe, fairly easy to find. They are one of those brands that, you know, you just go to a, a big box store or a department store and you'll find a pair of inline skates from a brand that you've never heard of. That's Core. Um, there are plenty of brands out there that make skates. They're usually the same skates. They come from a few different factories in China. Sometimes you'll find a gem, sometimes you won't. Um, 
Only thing that I can recommend with those is you probably will want to upgrade the liners and you'll probably want to upgrade the wheels before too long. The skates themselves might be okay. I don't have a lot of experience with them. I don't know what the price is, but usually if you find something for skating and the price is too good to be true, it probably is. There's probably a problem with them. I would look at getting myself, if you are, you know, if you have money in mind and these are the skates in mind, go for it. You know, nothing wrong with that. I would probably save up and get yourself some budget of a recommended brand. So usually if you're really, really on a budget, if you don't want to spend a lot of money, the two skates that I recommend, Majestic 12, usually they start around 179 for a plain Majestic 12, black Majestic 12. It's not going to be great, but it's going to be a quality boot, quality frame. Maybe that frame isn't so great, but it is UFS, so you can always swap it out later. But if you just want to go skate, Majestic 12 is great. The Razor's Colt. So that's another great low, low price, um, high quality skate. Lots of people love the uh, Razor's Colts. The liners are going to suck. The wheels might be okay. The frames are probably Featherlight 3s. So you'll probably get a lot of bang for your buck with that. And then ultimately, if you want to save up a little bit, get yourself some USD Sways. Those are great skates, great sole plate, probably come with a Fluid 4 or a Fluid 5 frame really great option they're probably going to run around 200 bucks maybe a little less than 200 bucks might be more than you intend to pay but honestly anything lower than 200 bucks you're probably not going to have a great experience skating and you're probably just going to throw the skates out and say you know this isn't worth it maybe skating isn't for me but really it's not skating that isn't for you it's that the skates that you bought are a really bad example of what skating could be any of those skates the colt the majestic 12 or the sway are definitely good enough for anybody to skate. I mean, pros skate in those Majestic 12s, Sways, and Colts and love them. Um, they are quality skates. You might need to upgrade them, but you can always do that. You have a nice foundation to start off of. The core skate, probably not going to be that good. You're probably not going to be able to upgrade them. You probably won't be able to do much with them. You're probably going to have a bad experience. Just my recommendation, um, you're not going to find a lot of reviews on them because they're just not popular skates. They don't sell them in the States, so I can't get them here. Um, but, you know, if they look good for you, I'm not going to tell you what to do with your money. I just hope that they fit you well. Um, and, uh, yeah, maybe you'll have a great time. I, yeah, I don't know. I wouldn't do it, but, you know, <laughs> you be you. <laughs> All right, uh, Cameron. Hey, Cameron, if you had to compare the Mesmer Throne Cuff to any other, what would you say it is most similar to? That is a great question. So Mesmer's, so these are the Mesmer Bellinos. These are the Mesmer Thrones. Uh, the key word with the Mesmer Cuff is tall. This cuff is very tall. So you're used to, I mean, any other cuff. I guess the Majestic 12 this is a low cut cuff. Let's count the blanks. These blanks from Rollerblade. These are kind of like a mid-range cuff. Line them up pretty well. This is actually pretty normal as well, but if you look at the back, like the V-cut of the blank at least gives you a little bit of flex back there. The height isn't that off. The tallest part of the blank is about the tallest part of the Mesmer, but the back of the Mesmer is just completely flat. Um, I didn't have any issues with the cuff or any noticeable issues with the cuff. My biggest problem with the Mesmers was the fit. The liners that came with them were the wrong size for my foot. Honestly, the wrong size as marked. They were probably a centimeter shorter than they were marked as, which is a little frustrating. Um, but they're also more narrow than you realize. They have this little, you can see this flange area that flanges out here. That's very deceiving. The real width of this skate is up here. And that width is way too narrow for my heels. They started really hurting. It was like my foot was in a vice and it kept pinching. And after like 20 minutes of skating, my heels started really hurting. So I don't recommend these if you have a wide foot. I think they're good for narrow foot people, but I wouldn't get them if you have a normal or a wide foot. Honestly, my Majestic 12s, which everybody complains are the most narrow skates, felt a hundred times better than these Mesmers. They just didn't fit. 
my foot at all. And I've heard from a lot of people that are experiencing the same issues. It doesn't help you with your cuff issue though. I didn't have any issues with the cuff. I didn't feel like I lost any tricks skating them. I do feel like it's a little tall. I would love to have more of a V cut, but it's definitely a style. All right. Hope that answered your question. Um, I don't know that it's similar to anything. It's its own thing, but it's definitely a tall cuff. I wouldn't say it's restrictive or stiff, but it's definitely something out there. Uh, Dolphin Uppercut Avenger. Um, thanks for sponsoring Blades and Quads last month at the compound. We had a blast. Have a great show tonight. Thank you so much for attending and being part of the community. Um, Cameron Card is an old friend and he reached out and said, would you be happy? Would you be interested in sponsoring? And obviously I'll do anything for Cameron. He is a great dude and I didn't get up to the event, but I saw that it was a great turnout. Um, anything I can do for community events, I try to help out with. You know, it's important that we do everything that we can to keep blading strong. I'm not really sure where I stand with the quad thing. I do understand that it's the, it's the closest thing that we have to blading in action sports. You know, we're not close to scooters. We're not close to bikes or BMX or skateboards or anything like that. You can kind of compare us to quads, but they are very different sports. For whatever reason, the quad community attracts more female participants, where the aggressive community attracts more male participants. I don't know why, but that's just the way that it is. Maybe it's the roots of quad and the roller girl style or the derby style, and then those derby girls just started moving over to more of a, I don't know what they call quad, street quad, when they do grind plates and stuff like that. But it's been really interesting to watch that discipline that level of quad rise over the last couple of years um, and you know anything that i can do to help blading i'm down for i don't know if i really want to help quad that much just to be honest there's only so much money out there and uh, i do like helping people be happy uh, and if i can help blading then that's great but i don't know quad is such a weird it's a it's a weird quad week I'll put it, uh, put it that way. And I think anybody out there who knows, uh, you know, uh, just, uh, it's just a weird, it's a weird time. Um, I, I'm indifferent on quads. You do your thing. Um, I'm a rollerblader. That's what I like to do. <laughs> but I'm glad that you enjoyed the event. Um, and we're definitely more than happy to help out next year. Um, all right. Sean Marco Lewis. When it comes to skate testing, how durable they usually want it to be before people even consider selling it, such as frames and wheels? It's a good question. Um, for my brands, so for 5050 Compass Chroma, um, and even you know the brands that I represent with mushroom blading, we do a lot of testing of wheels. Um, wheels are the one thing that we probably test more than anything. And the reason is that you can have a bad boot, but boots probably won't break on you. Liners, you know, everybody's foot is a little different. It's really hard to test a liner and, you know, buckles and cuffs and things like that. I don't have a lot of experience testing, but I got to assume that most of those parts aren't going to break on you. Frames and wheels and bearings, those are the things that are going to get the most abuse. So we definitely spend a lot of time testing frames, wheels, and bearings. Now for wheels, we skate wheels a lot. Um, I usually get samples of anything that I'm going to be bringing out and I give them to the team and we skate them. When we started working with the mushroom blading guys, we sent them all of the wheels that we had in stock. And I was like, hey, we're happy to do some wheels with you. What do you, what do you wanna make? And they just tried them all. And they said, well, we like these, we like these, we don't like these and we came up with a line of wheels that suits them. And then they came out with their own designs, they came out with their colors, they came out with their marketing and everything like that. They did a lot of testing. They knew in their heads what sizes they wanted and they're very specific with which wheels and which profiles and which harnesses are right for them. So they tested a lot and that's where they came up with these great wheels. 
Um, same thing goes with, you know, our skaters. Um, we, when we're bringing out, so I was talking a little bit about these white wheels. Um, I have skated these white wheels in the past. I've skated white wheels from our factory in the past and they held up great. This is our first small order of wheels to see how well they hold up before we jump in and do a full size run in, uh, in white. So we're bringing in a small amount, I think 250 sets that we're going to be testing. Obviously we guarantee our wheels, if they're going to break or dehub or decor or anything like that, we always send out new wheels. They shouldn't wear any faster than any other wheels. We'll send out new wheels. We take care of them, but that is the best way to do it. You got to get out there and skate and you got to see what they feel like. There's probably a lot of things that our factory does to test the wheels, to see if there's a weight difference or a bounce difference or a stress test sort of thing. I don't know any of that. What I do know is we put the wheels and the products through rigorous testing through our team. That's why we have our team and we check to make sure that they're good enough for them. Typically, if they're good enough for them, they're good enough for most people. Frames, same situation. When we're designing new frames, we get samples from the factory and we start testing them and we see what can be improved, what tolerances we need to tweak, what materials we can try until we hone in that perfect thing. Usually it takes six to eight months for a new product. So that's back and forth, you know, after we get the frames to start testing, back and forth, testing them for a month, providing feedback, getting new modifications, new samples, testing them for another few weeks, getting more feedback, that sort of thing. It's a really fun process, but know that most companies probably do the same thing and they test their products as, as crazily as we do. Um, and you know, we love skating. So any little tweaks, things like that, um, it's always nice to try it and see if it really makes a difference. And if it's, if it's worth spending money for, you know, cause ultimately we're skaters. We don't want to buy something if, you know, if it's not worth the money that we would buy ourselves, why would anybody out there buy it? You know, it's a business. We got to sell these things. So we want to make sure that we ship good stuff. Great question though. I think, don't think we've ever talked about our testing uh, process, but yeah, we do pretty good testing. We, any rider like on uh, Chroma, when we were doing um, for China's wheel, for example, we sent her all of the wheels and she was like, I like this one. This one's a little too hard. This one's a little bouncy. So we narrowed it in with the 5888 and that's the wheel that she loves. Um, so yeah, it's, it's important that the rider tests each of the products doesn't just put their name on something. It's something that they actually like and they'll actually skate. Um, Jeff Kane might be a noob question. How are helmets measured? I'd like to get one for my son. We don't have any real skate shops around here for him to try one on. That's actually a great question. And I don't know why nobody's asked that before. Um, if you go to triple eight.com, I usually recommend triple eight. They're a really great company. They support rollerblading, uh, which is what I like. Uh, but if you go to triple eight.com, they have a sizing chart. Now each of their helmets is a little different. I recommend the certified sweat saver. That's the one that I have for my daughter. That's the one that I ride. They are not the most expensive. They're not the cheapest, but they're not the most expensive. They're not the most comfortable, but they're some of the most safe. They're the balance between spending too much for super safety and spending just enough for keeping yourself safe. And you know, if you do hit your head, you're going to be pretty well protected. They have a sizing chart and their sizing chart is usually the circumference of your head. So they'll have a drawing on how to show, how to test the, uh, the, the size of your head. And usually you take a piece of string or a USB cable or whatever sort of wire or anything that you've got. And you start from the back of your head, you wrap it all the way around to the front of your head. Now, obviously it's not exact, but you can get a pretty good accurate measurement. And then they check the circumference. You take the string off, you measure it, and then they have a sizing chart for that. Most of the triple eight helmets that we get have a dual sizing setup. So they have a foam padding that you can remove that takes out like five centimeters or so of circumference. So if your, you know, if your head is like in the middle, you can put that padding in and it makes it a little bit tighter or you can take it out. So it makes it a little bit looser. Really great for kids because then you can get on the low end and as they get bigger, you can take that padding out and their helmet will still work for them. Obviously you should be buying the helmet anytime you hit your head. 
That means that the helmet's probably not going to protect you as well. If you hit your head, you should get a new helmet. But realistically, you know, I get a helmet every couple of years. Um, kids, probably the same. If they're waiting two years, they're probably going to grow out of it anyway. Um, but by that time, you know, maybe you'll be able to get a different helmet or they'll be in a different sizing or something like that. But yeah, Triple Eight is a great website for that. Um, you can also go to ProTech. ProTech is another um, high quality brand that we recommend for helmets. Uh, either one of those is great and they'll have great sizing charts. Um, remember also there are plenty of sports that use helmets. So if you don't have an inline skate shop, you can go to a skateboard shop. You can go to a BMX shop. Plenty of companies or uh, shops out there will sell helmets. Um, go to ProTech or Triple Eight's website and you can find a shop listing to find any shop near you that might uh, have them in stock. And then you can just go try them on. In worst case, you buy them from Amazon or something like that. And then you put them on, see if it fits your head. If it doesn't fit your head, you can send it back. But good luck. Um, I definitely recommend helmets. Again, most important thing, always wear your helmets. And for kids, I would recommend wrist guards as well. You don't want to break any of those bones in your wrists when you're young. It can really screw up their ability to do the fine motor skills and everything. So knees and elbow pads, I mean, that's all well and good. Like you're going to fall and if you hurt yourself, it's going to suck. Wear your full pads. But if you have to wear just the minimum amount of pads, helmet always, wrist guards, highly recommended. Great question. Great, great question. I hope you find something. Um, Sam Haynes, see you at the compound for the skates. Yes, I'm going to be going up to the compound as soon as the faction skates are here. I don't know when they're going to be here, but I've heard a rumor uh, that there should be a small drop, which includes some in my size at the end of May. So with every, if, if I'm lucky, I'm going to be able to drive up there uh, and check out, uh, check out the, the compound and get the skates, but fingers crossed. Nothing confirmed yet. As soon as I know, I will start planting the seed and see if I can start getting time off work or getting time off of house duty, <laughs> kids duty. Uh, Lander, is there a specific rotation for the Yandro Chroma wheel, considering that the wheel has different harnesses? Really good idea. Uh, again, good question. Yes, so what I would do is I would recommend rotating rear to front and swap them. And then I would just flip the middle ones. So the middle wheels are 92A. The outside wheels are 90A. The outside wheels are going to wear faster. You could just go from left to right and right to left. Essentially just taking your frames off and just taking them off and go like this. Because then the rear wheel ends up in the rear over here, but on the opposite side. The catch with that is the rear wheel for me always wears a little bit faster. So I would probably, to prolong the life, I would probably not only take them off and flip them, but I would put them in front. So the rear wheel is in the front and then I would flip it so that the outside is now on the inside. And with these, I would probably just flip them around. I don't think these are going to wear much at all. If you do notice any wear, you might want to put them on the opposite side. Put two to three and three to two, but make sure that you flip them so that they get some nice even wear. It's a really good question. We don't really have a recommendation for rotation. But those are special wheels. The fact that the middle are harder than the outside, um, you don't want to mix those up. You think of um, tri-skates. So do I have my tri-skates? No, I don't really skate three-wheel anymore. I have the big ones. Let me get these big bad boys. So if you only had three wheels, like these sways or swells, the way that they rotate these skates is they take the first wheel and they rotate it and then they put it in the back. And this wheel, they rotate it and they put it in the back. And this wheel, they just rotate. I think that would be the right way to do it with the Yandy wheels. Take the rear, put it in the front, put the front, put it in the wheel, rear, and then just rotate the, uh, rotate the middle ones. It's a great question. I have not thought about that, but that is probably what I would do if I were skating. I'll we'll ask Andrew what he does. I don't know what he does. I'll ask. Um, Hey, Zach, thanks for the insights. Planning a cheap or old pair as entry to get the basics while saving up for a better. What's come out uh, about razors? No razors. Understood. Razors going to razors. Um, it's the way that some companies are. 
love them or hate them, uh, but you can vote with your dollar. You know, if you don't want to support, definitely don't buy the company's uh, products. All right, I think we're good. Um, we have uh, a few more, but I will get started on this real quick. Ding, 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 ding. There are actually a few more questions, but I'm going to get to them. I see your question, Mr. Darren. I will wait to answer that. I will stop scrolling and then I will get to that soon. Um, wanted to talk a little bit about vintage skates. You look on my wall and I've got a bunch of skates that either haven't been skated for a few years. Some of them haven't been skated for more than a few years, 10, 20 years. And I sometimes get people asking, you know, why don't you do a review of this, these skates, like these, I don't know, uh, rollerblade paws, or these paws, or I don't know what they're called. Um, and the reason is, beside the fact that sometimes they don't fit me, I know these aren't all size 10 and a half, they won't all fit me. The reason is, old skates aren't meant to be skated. The plastics that they used back in the days were great for the times. But most of these skates, if you put them on your feet and if you went out skating, they would crack in a few places. Plastic does not hold up as well as you might think. I've got a few skates here to illustrate the problem. So last two weekends ago, uh, we had the 50-50 team over and our friend Yandril Savario uh, was telling himself I'm recovering from an injury so I am not going to skate instead I'm going to bring my big wheel setup and I'm going to skate 4x80 and that lasted for a good 12 hours until he started doing all of his aggressive tricks with his big wheel skates and realized hey you know what it doesn't hurt I should be able to skate now I need to find myself a pair of skates to skate and I said well I've got a wall of skates. If you can find them in your size, they're yours. And we got him my beloved Solomon STIs. However, as soon as he put them on, these were my beautiful STIs. As soon as I put, he put them on, the cuff just cracked in half. So literally putting them on his feet and just bending his foot this way to test like a top side or test the Royale groove and crack, it just came out. The other cuff is still in good shape. The other cuff is just fine. Ugh. This one's just fine. And he was skating them all weekend with no problem, but this cuff did not fare as well. Cuffs are probably the one Thing, the main thing that's going to break in the old skates. If you have a pair of K2s, you probably know you pick them up or you look at them wrong and the cuff is going to break on you. The plastics that are used for cuffs gets a lot of stress. You know, when you're doing strides, when you're doing topside tricks, when you're doing royales, you put a lot of pressure on this cuff and it's just going to crack. Especially after 20 years, these came out in 2004 four that's what i mean 18 years of this skate just sitting around not the greatest idea uh, to try to skate plastic from 15 20 years ago the cuffs are going to break after the cuffs breaking you're gonna get a lot of shells breaking so maybe your cuffs are going to hold up fine a lot of these shells though definitely have not fared that well. This is a pair of the Bauer Shifties that a friend sent me a few months ago, I think. And these were some of the original aggressive skates. So back in the days, they didn't really know what aggressive was. So they made these. And this was just a Bauer Fitness skate that had a slightly modified groove in their frame and they had a grind plate. But over time, you can see there's this crack. See, I can put my finger through it a little bit. Again, this plastic just doesn't hold up well. And I get a lot of people asking, you know, they're coming back into skating and they've got these K2 fatties or they've got these whatever skates. And they say, 
I'm ready to skate again. Do you know where I can get some new wheels? And I'm like, well, your skates are going to fall apart on you after a couple of sessions. It's probably best to put your skates up on the wall, on a wall here, or put them in a, you know, Ikea cabinet or some sort of a shelving system and put them up where you can appreciate them. Don't go out and try to skate these skates. They are super dangerous. If you're skating anything, you know, remotely fast and your shell breaks on you, that could be a really bad fall, especially if you're not wearing a helmet. It could be a really bad fall that you're not expecting. You do a turn and the cuff just pops off and the frame pops off. Absolutely could happen. I've seen clips of people just destroying old skates. Not a good idea. So that's plastic shells. Plastic shells, you got to look out for the cuffs breaking. You got to look out for the bottom boot area, just cracking a lot of hairline fractures around this. Wheels, wheels are a little less of a problem. If you skate old wheels, if they were quality wheels, they're not going to be as good as they used to be. Wheels are pretty cheap nowadays. You can get a set of four wheels for like 40 bucks, set of eight wheels for 80 bucks. They're going to be really high quality wheels. I would just get yourself some new wheels. Same goes for bearings, you know, set of bearings, full set of bearings, 20, 40 bucks. You're not going to break the bank getting yourself new bearings. And whenever you try to do a, a, a spring cleaning or a fresh, um, you know, hop up kit of uh, or a, a tune up of your skates, the one thing that everybody recommends, get yourself some new wheels and new bearings. You will feel like you're on a completely new skate. I don't have much problem with people skating old wheels. You're not going to have much uh, of the performance. I think the urethane doesn't hold up super well over the years, but it's not a bad thing. You can skate the old wheels all that you want. There are other skates out there. So if you're not skating a plastic boot, a soft boot, those have not held up very well at all. So a lot of the soft boots used different glues to hold the boots together. So this was the K2 Nemesis. This came out after the Fatty Pro, after the Fatties and everything. Most of this is plastic. So you can see this plastic area here. This sole plate is plastic, you know, frame is plastic. This cuff up here actually looks like it's in pretty good shape. But the way that this boot attached to this base plate area wasn't through rivets it was through glue and it's completely come apart you can see the inside of the skate it's just this gross like just <laughs> just this foam sort of thing you could probably glue it back together i don't know i think these would get destroyed after a little bit of time Unfortunately, most of the K2 skates were like this. So if you have a pair of old K2s, you're looking for a lot of glue that's now just disintegrated or a lot of the foam that's now disintegrated. Very, very careful. If you want to go out and skate those old skates, check them before you do anything. Um, I would be shocked if you could go out and skate some old K2s. I just don't think they're designed to hold up that long. The glues are going to break down. The glue is not going to last as long as plastic is. These probably lasted 10 years before they started falling apart. Just this, if you've ever looked at old sneakers, same deal. If you look at, you know, some old Jordans that are like, oh, they're in the box, but I've never touched them. Oh, you open the box, they just fell apart because all of that material and those rubber and those polyurethane and stuff like that, it just falls apart after time. The last thing is if you do have a pair of Solomons. So Solomons are great skates. Um, you can definitely find them with the cuffs still intact. Um, not all Solomons have broken cuffs and most Solomons hold up really well. The plastics that they used have stood the test of time. The problem is inside this Solomon boot is a shock absorber. These shock absorbers are designed to give you a little bit of a forward lean so it will keep your flat foot lean it a little bit forward so that it feels like it's more of an athletic pose. It gives you a little bit of shock absorption so 
it's a padded squishy foam that goes in your heels so you, when you land you get a little bit more of a bounce on your heels the problem is that bounce that squishy feeling those shock absorbers have disintegrated over time so if you have an old pair of solomons hanging out at your house or if you find a pair on ebay that you like or you find a pair at the play it against sports or some sort of a goodwill used thrift store you might be able to skate these solomons and they might be great but you should replace these shocks these shocks are going to be disintegrated and even if they aren't when you go out there and skate them after a few gaps they're just going to fall apart on you and they're going to really hurt your heels the best thing to do for those is you can get yourself some myfit shock absorbers they have them from the uh, from the Mesmers. Do I have mine? I think I still have them over here. I think these were the ones that came from my Mesmers. I actually took them out. This is a lower shock. So the size is, you know, maybe 10, 12 millimeter at the back. You could put those in here and that would be good. What a lot of people do to replicate that Solomon forward lean is they use the shocks that are from like the Razor's Shift or the Razor's SL. So these SLs, you're going to have to modify those SL shocks a little bit. We can see this is the shock absorber in the Razor's SL. It's very thick. But cut this off, trim it a little bit. You can get these brand new. They still make SLs. They make them now. They also make them in the Razor Shift. Those are available now. Very similar very similar shock in both of those skates. You can get whichever one you want. If you like a little bit more of a forward lean, a little bit more cushion, either one works. Just make sure that you replace them if you're planning on skating your Solomons. I don't want anybody out there hurting their heels, expecting there to be a little bit of a cushion. That shock isn't gonna last very long. So make sure that you take care of your skates. If you have skates now and you wanna keep them as long as some people have kept their Solomons, um, few tips, make sure that you keep them in a climate controlled area. You don't want extreme heat or extreme cold. That means don't leave them in your car. Don't leave them in your attic. Don't leave them in your garage. You never know how hot things are going to get or how cold they're going to get. And plastic doesn't like crazy temperature swings. I would always recommend put them in a bin, a sealed bin that has no light. You don't want a translucent bin so that you can look at them through the thing. You want to put them in a bin that doesn't get any sunlight in there. You don't want UV light getting in there. You can put them in a closet that might help, but definitely keeping them in a bin will keep any rodents out, any mice or anything that you might find, birds or anything that could come into your, into your house and into your closet and eat on the things you don't want people building nests in your skates or spiders putting their eggs and web all over the place you don't want any of that put them in a bin put them in your closet um, but honestly you know you could do something like what i do display them um, if you love your skates and if they have something uh some great memories for you make make a good place for them don't just put them in a box somewhere um, Find a place on your mantle, on your wall, get yourself a little shelving unit that you can display some of your memories. Pictures of you when you were skating, pictures of you and your friends, love that sort of stuff. Get them framed, send them out to a printer and get them nice, you know, put on those glass, like uh, fracture um, frames so that they're really nice. Like you don't need a lot of stuff, but keep yourself some stuff that reminds you of the good times that you had. Um, it's much better than putting them in a box and just forgetting about them. I, I love looking at other people's stuff when I go over to their house and just asking the questions, asking the story behind this plate or why is this baseball mitt up here or something like that. And you can do the same thing with your skates. And it's always nice to look at things. All right. Uh, good luck if you are out there and you've got old skates. Um, I know a lot of you out there are still skating Solomons. It's absolutely fine. I'm not going to judge. Uh, but there are, know that there are plenty of great skates out there now, plenty more skates on the horizon. You don't have to be skating 20 year old skates. You can definitely find something, something new that's going to suit your style. 
All right, uh, last few questions, and then I'm going to wrap up. My throat is starting to hurt, but I am powering through, and we will see. We will see what we see. Um, all right, questions. Mr. Darren25, as a business owner, how healthy do you think the aggressive market is right now? Excellent question. Um, without getting too deep into the business side of things. I know that you guys don't mind the business side of things. Um, without getting too deep into my personal experience, I think we're doing great. So I'll say it straight up. Uh, Balance twos are selling great. The Sasha prime frames are selling great. We only have a few sets left and then we've got to get more cores in. Uh, the Yandy wheels, I think we have like five sets on hand. They're selling great. Everything that we're doing right now is selling great. So we don't have any issues with any bringing in stuff and them just sitting. With that being said, we're definitely scaling back our production this year versus a year ago or two years ago. I think there are a lot of, in the world, I think there's a lot of economic change happening. You know, there's a lot of talk about inflation and about a recession here in the United States. Obviously, whenever countries are at war, that impacts the global supply chain and the cost of electricity and energy in Europe is going up. If the cost of energy is going up, that means that there's less money to spend on hobbies. You're not going to cut food. You're not going to cut electricity. So if you make thousand bucks a month and your electric bill went up by 50 bucks a month, that means you have 50 bucks left, uh, 50 bucks less that you can spend on wheels or a helmet or a new skate. So I think we're in a, a weird time right now with the global economy. Um, I, you know, I'm not an economist. I don't, I do listen to a lot of business podcasts and I try to keep on top of things just to be aware, you know, I don't want to be caught off guard. You know, if there's a recession, I want to know that it's, it's coming and it's on its way. That will impact everything in general. That's just skating, not just aggressive specifically. As far as aggressive specifically, I'm seeing a bit of a slowdown, obviously, year over year. Last year was a little bit busier than this year. The year before was busy, busy, busy because it was COVID. I don't know what normal is anymore. When we brought back the company in 2018, I saw that there was an opportunity for me to do something because I was passionate about blading. It was nothing to do with making money. It was nothing to do about starting a business that can then, you know, become this big thing that I have four brands under my roof and I can support all of these writers and do pro products and stuff like that. It was nothing like that. I just wanted to make frames again. And that was my goal for bringing back 5050. I wanted to have product back. And year over year, we started reinvesting and I was like, okay, this is actually a thing. We can do more. We can do backpacks, we can do wheels, we can do bearings. And Aggressive started slowly growing. And I felt like, you know, using my YouTube analytics as well as the sales that 5050 was getting, I felt like Aggressive was on its way up. And you could look at Google Trends and you could see that inline skating was getting a little bit more search year over year from 2018 to 2019. Obviously, 2020 was boom year where everybody was talking about rollerblading and stuff. We are not back where we were in 2018, nor are we back where we were in 2019, but we're definitely not where we were in 2020. I don't know where we are. I think after this year, we're going to see. For me personally, I'm kind of in a wait and see sort of thing. I don't want to do any big new projects, but I'm going to continue doing what I do. Thankfully, I was really smart, and during COVID, any of the extra money that we made from selling out of all of the products that were going to take a year to sell and we sold in three months, I put all of that money back into the company. So that's where we got the compass frames. That's where we got the prime frames. That's where we got the balance too. That's where we got new products that we haven't announced yet that are coming that I was able to buy molds that allowed me to now make frames that are more modern, that people are going to like, that will have another 20 year lifespan. You know, the original balance frame we designed in 2001 and we started making in 2001, 2002. That mold lasted 20 years. That's incredible. 
So if we can get 20 years out of the balance two or the prime or the compass mold, I mean, that's amazing. The expense for those molds are all paid off now. So now all that I have to do is make frames, bring them in and actually make money off of the products. And I think it's in a really, I'm in a really good place for that. Um, I think aggressive is what I love to do. I'm not going to stop doing that. I think there's a lot of people out there who do the same. I do think that aggressive is going to go more into a big wheel world. The people who came back during COVID, maybe they're tired of falling down. Maybe their knees are getting hurt. They're going to want to skate bigger wheels. And that's why we started bringing out the compass frames to give people an option so that they could continue skating their boots that they're used to, the liners that they're used to. But you can put some four by eighties on there and you can go and skate around your neighborhood and just have a great time skating. You know, I think all of us love skating more than anything. You know, we love the feeling of grinding. We love the pumping of transitions and the, you know, the backsides on copings. Like there's nothing wrong with just sessioning a ledge all day. But when it comes down to it, I think skating is where all of us fell in love with this hobby. And I think skating is going to be here for a long time. Um, the aggressive side might taper off a little bit. Um, I do think that, uh, you know, as the participants that came back get older, they're going to want to skate aggressive a little bit less. I do think there is fresh blood. There are more kids that are getting into it. You're seeing a lot more kids that are, you know, skating with their parents and doing aggressive with their parents, which is amazing. We've never had that generational thing where people grew up skating and now they're older and they have kids and they're teaching their kids how to do aggressive. That's going to be really interesting, but I think it's a little too early to tell what that is going to do to our industry. Um, ultimately, I think aggressive is not going anywhere, uh, but I do think that the boom that we saw in the last couple of months or a couple of years, definitely going to slow down. I think we'll have less new companies, less new brands, less new products uh, over the next couple of years as people kind of batten down the hatches and try to figure out how to make a sustainable business versus a business that Anything you make is going to sell because aggressive is crazy and everybody loves it. It's not like that anymore. You've got to be really smart with what you bring in. There's going to be a lot of stock out there of skates that haven't sold. And I hope skate shops stay in business. Um, if they put all of their money into skates and the skates aren't selling right now, it's a lot of money in inventory that's just sitting on the shelf that they can't move. So... I do hope that everybody is safe out there <laughs> and doesn't uh, go crazy with all of their inventory is really smart. Um, and yeah, I, all the shops that I've spoken to right now, kind of sensing the same thing. They're all just being very conservative. They're still ordering products because there are plenty of people out there who want to support the skaters and they're still skating, but you know, the economy is a little weird right now. So it's kind of hard to tell. I think if you ask that question again in fall, I'll have a different answer, but right now, I think we're all kind of in a, let's see how this summer goes. We're not quite sure what's going to happen this year. Not the optimistic outlook that I was thinking that, that you might have wanted. Uh, this is episode 95, so I've been doing this for three years or so. If you go all the way back, and if you asked me back in the beginning, definitely you could see that COVID boom and how crazy things were, shipping out orders every week. It's not like that anymore. Every couple of weeks, we ship out orders to some of our bigger shops. Uh, the orders are still pretty big, uh, but they're definitely not like the crazy COVID boom of, uh, of 2020. Great question. Um, I love talking about that stuff. So if there's any other questions on that, please feel free to uh, post on the uh, uh, live stream or leave a comment. I, I love talking about that stuff. Um, Zach Markham. Hey, Zach, again. Can you recommend any good skates for people with wide feet? Absolutely. Um, so the best skates for people with wide feet. So these are the Razor's Genesis. Um, I know that you're not a big fan of Razor's, but if you're looking for wide feet, Razor's Genesis is probably the best wide foot skate that you can get. The width is like, 0.5 centimeters wider than any other skate on the market. So for the same length, you have more width than normal. If you're not looking for razors, you can go with the Rossi's Fifth Element. 
The sizing on these is really funky, but they are wide. You can see how wide they are. This is a size 44. The weird thing with this is that the length is pretty spot on. The width is really wide. So they recommend that you downsize. So if I were a 28.5 centimeter uh, foot, instead of the size 44, I should probably get a 42, which is kind of weird, like just make the skates the size that my foot is. But because of the width and the length, I think things are, the ratio is just all off. The Rossi's Fifth Element, definitely a good skate for wide feet. I think a lot of people skate them. Probably some of the best sole plates on the market. A little bit heavy, but they're not razors. So if you're looking for something that isn't razors, it's either this or the Razor's Genesis for wide feet. I would definitely go with the Fifths. I think they're good skates. They're a little heavy, but I think you can get over that. Great questions tonight. Uh, let's see. Um, John Drog, what is it about the green pigment Todd and Joey and Todd light? How does it, um, after the feel of the wheel, alter the feel of the wheel compared to black or white? You know what? I haven't had any negative feedback on the color as far as performance. Some people don't like the color. That's fine. Um, but as far as performance, nobody's said anything. I haven't noticed anywhere. I haven't had any returns. And I haven't had any shops say, hey, we had one that wore faster or broke. So I don't think it made any difference. In relation to that, the white has the most pigment. So if the green works well, and honestly, we had the China blue, that light blue was a lot of pigment. If we got the China blue, and if we got the mushroom olive, whatever you want to call it, and Yandy's orange, I don't have any reason to think that the whites won't hold up but you never know. Um, I do think that pigment makes a difference in the compound of the urethane. I just don't know how much it impacts it. They say that it doesn't, but I mean, I, I could be, I don't know, I'm not a chemist, so I don't know. Uh, but yeah, I think the mushroom blading wheels hold up just fine. I haven't had any returns, haven't had any complaints. All right. Uh... True Skeet, again, hey, true. Um, the Solomon plastic has definitely deteriorated over the years, but it was the one skate that was able to get me back on wheels. Yeah, absolutely. Solomons are great. Um, I don't recommend them because, you know, I like people to support current brands, but they're definitely, of the old skates, the best of the old skates. The only old skate that I would recommend people skate if they still had them in their closet. Um... Dolphin Uppercut Avenger, I'm trying to get the Roca 90, 72, 72, 72, 72, 90 frames, 381 wheelbase. Makes me wonder how far can we push the wheelbase of UFS frames? I mean, you could push it as far as you want. The standard is 167 from one to four. So UFS 167 from one to four. If the wheelbase is 350, I mean, it really doesn't matter, right? You could add additional mounting if you wanted to, but you would, you're kind of limited by the length of the boot. You know, 167, most boots are like 290 to 300. I mean, so this is a Razor Genesis 44. You can see the length of the frame. It fits fine on the boot. You could go as long as you wanted, but you're starting to get past the boot and then you start getting clipping. These crazy where are they oh my crazy boys these swells i don't know what the length of these are but these are definitely a long these are 12.5 inches so what's that a foot and a half or a foot and a quarter or a foot a foot and one half inch that's a long wheelbase i mean this is 270 no these are two yeah, these are 270. These are largest. So definitely a long wheelbase, but you can go as long as you want. That's what's so beautiful about UFS. doesn't matter. You just have two holes that you need to mount in. Make this as strong as you want, as light as you want. doesn't matter. Um, let me know what you think of those frames. I, 
I think the the current trend of putting as many wheels on your frame as possible is hilarious. Um, it kind of reminds me of the Razors companies, not Razors as in the skate, but like Bic and uh, uh, Gillette and uh, uh, when they came out with a Mach 5 or whatever and they had five blades and it's like, why do you need so many blades? Um, you know, we've been shaving with two blades for so long. Oh, here's three. All right, three blades. Oh, I've got more blades. It's like, slow down with your blades. Just make razors that cut better. Um, I don't know if you need six wheels. <laughs> I think that might be excessive. It starts to get really heavy. You know, bearings aren't light. Um, so bearings and all those wheels, that's going to be pretty heavy skate. But to each their own. I mean, if you want more wheels <laughs> you got you got a frame for you <laughs> uh broom and engineer. um i'm bummed i moved out of the country for a few months and my dad gave my teen skates away i'm glad neighboring kids got them but bummed i can't show them ah that sucks i'm sorry to hear that i uh i hope you have some pictures of them um yeah it sucks that uh that people give away stuff my I don't know if my mom gave away my skates but i had a few skates then they moved and i think they were just donated again it's good that people have them somebody's going to really enjoy those skates but it kind of sucks that i don't have them anymore i feel you um zach do you know if we'll be able to see the recent crowder cup on youtube somewhere if you search for it you should be able to see some edits i know there are some uh popping up i don't know of any specifically, but I saw one posted yesterday that looked pretty good. I didn't watch it, um, but it looked uh, like five minutes or so, so they should be a few. You can also check Instagram. Um, I know it's not as elegant, but there's probably hashtag Crowder Cup or something like Crowder Power or something like that that you'll be able to find. It was a really great event. I had a really great time. Oh, we got spammers this time. I haven't had a spammer here in a long time. Fun to report. Uh, let's just say they are mm, unwanted commercial content or spam. There. Okay. Got it. Um, Oliver the dog. Is there some reason we don't see people do sidewalk grinds very often? I mean, there's a, probably a few reasons. Um, oops, my internet's slowing down. I'm sorry. Um, there's probably a few reasons. Those grinds aren't very cool. Um, they were very um, progressive because John just wanted to see if he could try something new, but they're definitely not, uh, they didn't age very well. Um, that might be one of the only grinds. We do see a little bit of the throwback stuff. We see wheelbarrows, we see... Uh, you know, front sides, things like that. But yeah, definitely the sidewalk is one of those grinds that just hasn't, hasn't aged well. I think that's why. Nobody really does them. They're kind of a laughable grind. Some people do uh, their porn stars like a sidewalk, though. So you'll see them pop up when you're least expecting them, that's for sure. I'm definitely guilty of that from time to time. All right, I think we're good. Um, more quad talk. Uh, yes, <laughs> I did see some people doing quad uh, sidewalks. I don't know if they know that they shouldn't be doing that, but hey, they can do whatever they want. It's not our sport. Anyway, um, I hope everybody is doing well. I hope you're being safe out there. Um, for us here in North Carolina, the COVID rates are very low, and I'm very conservative when it comes to COVID. I know that you've heard everything that I have to say about it. I was maskless when I was here, and I was fine. Not saying that everybody should be uh, I am vaccinated and boosted, and afterwards I did take COVID tests probably every day just to make sure that I was safe. I didn't want to give it to anybody in my family. Thankfully, my family is all vaccinated now. They're all vaccinated and up to date on boosters. I do recommend that you do the same, even though the numbers are low. You still don't want to get this thing. So if you haven't been vaccinated yet, you should get vaccinated. Um, if you can get boosted, get boosted. I know it seems like, oh, why? You know, the numbers are low. Well, let's not bring it back. And let's not let anybody get it. We don't want people getting sick. Most important thing, top of mind for me, is the fight for women's rights and the right of them to choose what to do with their bodies. There's been some leaks here. I don't want to get too political, but I think uh, it's crazy that people think that they can control a woman's body 
um, definitely, if, if there's anything that uh, you can do out there is, is read up on your, uh, read up on your news and learn about what's going on. Um, and when it comes time, make sure that you vote for people who will defend women's rights. It's important um, that we treat women as people. It's crazy that you have to say that, but it's important that we treat women as people, not incubators. They should have the right to do whatever they want with their body. It is not my responsibility to tell them what to do. And I think passing laws that say that <laughs> the government should be able to decide is freaking crazy. Um, but uh, that's the world that we're living in now. So I know that a lot of you out there uh, might have a different opinion on that. That's fine. I just like to be open about it. I don't want anybody wondering and I don't want to bring this into a political place, but this is a pretty big deal for me. Um, I have three da two daughters and a wife. Um, I, I fight for women. I'm very much a feminist and I think that it's important um, that we treat people with respect. And I don't know why we can't always just do that. <laughs> Some people just want to take control of everybody and that's screwed up. So anyway, um, on that note, on that uplifting note, um, I hope that everybody has a great week. I'm going to take some time off this weekend. I may be able to skate up at the mountains this weekend if the weather's permitting. I love that little skate park and just, just set up the camera. I usually do my quiet morning videos up there. Just a nice little session. Nothing, nothing crazy, but you know, just skate. And, uh, it's been a long month, uh, with all the shipping and with all the open houses and everything. So I need a little bit of downtime and I hope that you are taking care of yourself as well out there. Um, skating is a great mental exercise, definitely great physical exercise. If the weather permits, I encourage you to get out and skate as often as you can. Definitely get out this weekend. It should be beautiful here in North Carolina. I hope it's nice where you are. Thanks for joining me tonight for this, what, hour and 30 minutes of blabbering on about molds and soft goods and glue that didn't hold up after 20 years. Um, I hope that you are doing great. I hope that everything is good in your life and in your family. And um, I'll see you again, hopefully, in two weeks.